I'm Thomas Morgan. I had spent the last several years as a scout for John Sevier in the Watauga Militia. And I gotta tell you, he was one of the best commanders, one of the finest leaders I think I'd ever met. He was always out front leading us in the campaigns. Nola Chucky Jack's what we called him. So I'd like for you to hear from Colonel Sevier himself. My name is Colonel John Sevier. Now I understand you all want to hear about my involvement in the current war that we have with Great Britain, and I am happy to oblige you. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about my younger days. I was born in Augusta County, Virginia in 1745. My father had migrated to the colonies in 1740, first arriving in Baltimore, Maryland, and then finally settling in the Shenandoah Valley. My father was a fur trader and a tavern keeper. I helped with both of those, and I learned skills that helped me incredibly in the future. Now, I eventually opened my own tavern and helped found a small town called New Market. When I was 16, I fell in love and married Sarah Hawkins, and we started a farm. I was happy with this life until 1763, when the British drew a line down the Appalachian mountain range and said it was illegal to live west of it. Now, you better believe that did not sit well with me and my fellow backcountry citizens. So, we decided to stay put and ignore old King George in England. Now, in 1773, relations between the settlers and the natives were not going so well. So, Virginia's royal governor, Lord Dunmore, called on the militia to help fight off any possible attacks. I was made captain of one of the militia units that fought under Colonel George Washington. Now, during the Dunmore War, I made several friends, like Isaac Shelby and a fellow from North Carolina by the name of Daniel Boone. Before I fought in Dunmore's War, I moved my family to the Holston settlement on the Holston River. Now, since we were technically living outside of British rule, several of us in the region decided to form our own government. We had purchased the land we lived on from the Cherokee in 1772 with the most prominent settlement being the Watauga Settlement at the Sycamore Shoals. We created the Watauga Association, and I moved my family to the Watauga Settlement and was made clerk of the association's five-man court in 1775. Now also in 1775, a man from North Carolina showed up by the name of Richard Henderson. He was a former judge and had created a land company called the Transylvania Company. He had come to the settlement to negotiate a large land purchase in the Kentucky region with the Cherokee chief, Atacula Kula. I was a witness to the purchase. Well, we soon heard word that on April 19th, war had erupted up north at Lexington, Concord. Needless to say, we were supportive of the new Patriot cause we set up a 13-man commission of safety and even sent a petition to the state of Virginia to be annexed as part of the colony. They denied our petition, so we sent it to North Carolina instead. With war now raging in the colonies, we feared that a Cherokee warrior named Dragon Canoe would attack our settlement. Our fears became a reality when the Cherokee beloved woman, Nancy Ward, came to us warned us of the impending attack. New and old Abram arrived at the fort that we had constructed around the Watauga settlement, which we had named Fort Caswell after North Carolina's governor, but most of us just called it Fort Watauga, and they laid siege to it. Now, before the attack, several ladies were out milking the cows, and when the Cherokee attacked, they come running for their lives toward the fort. All of them made it in but one. Mrs. Catherine Bonnie Kate Sherrill immediately began climbing the palisade walls until I was able to grab her and pull her in. 
The attack lasted for two weeks before the Cherokee finally gave up. Then things calmed down for a little while. I was sent with five other delegates to the North Carolina Constitution Convention in November of 1776. This new state constitution turned our settlements into the District of Washington, and in 1777 into Washington County, and I was appointed Lieutenant Colonel of the Washington County Militia. I was also elected to represent the county in the North Carolina House of Representatives. On 1780, things took a turn for the worse. In May, Charlestown fell to the British, with over 5,000 brave Continentals being made prisoners of war. I'm not sure they'll ever be able to recover from that loss. Only two weeks later, a group of Virginia Continentals under Colonel Buford were slaughtered by that butcher Tarleton at the Waxhaws. In August, British General Lord Cornwallis defeated another Continental Army at Camden, which officially put South Carolina under British rule. With all the fighting in South Carolina, to say we were worried is an understatement. But that's when we found out that Isaac Shelby and Charles McDowell were crossing the mountains and attacking the bridge. They even defeated a Loyalist force at Musgrove Mill. Shortly after that, Shelby arrived at my door. Major Patrick Ferguson of the British Army had sent us a warning that if we didn't lay down our arms and submit to British rule, he would lay waste our homes and land with fire and sword. Well, that lit a fire under everybody like nothing else could. We sent word out to as many men as possible, calling them in to join the fight to take down Ferguson. We will amass an army large enough so that we will teach Ferguson a thing or two about fire and sword. 